tight. So my name is Dmitry, and I'm a JavaScript developer. And I guess, who is not JavaScript developer here? There are a few, actually. What are you doing here? <laughs> well, the JavaScript is kind of funny language, and we all know this, and we all know all the quirks and tricks, and there are plenty of presentations when people are just showing some cool JavaScript features and then saying, like, look, you didn't know that, and I know, so I'm smarter than you. And all these talks are kind of boring because they're not very useful. My, my talk will be sort of similar, <laughs> but I want to give a bigger message. The history of this talk, like how it was, or how I come up with the idea of talking about this stuff, is I had a conversation with a friend of mine, and we was looking at some code from different people, and he said, like, look, you could always see if some Java developer wrote some JavaScript code. It, it's very visible, right? Or PHP developer. And I, and I asked him, so what do you think? How is Java code written by JavaScript developer will look like? And he, it make him think, it make me think, and I'm like, what, how is JavaScript code written by JavaScript developer will look like? What is the pure JavaScript style? We all know, we all came to JavaScript from different backgrounds, and me personally, I was like many, was studying basic, Pascal, C++, then jump to JavaScript. And obviously, when I came to JavaScript, I have a very good understanding how the code should be written. And I was completely wrong. And JavaScript hit me in the back many, many times before I finally understood. And even now, I'm not sure I un understand JavaScript completely. Who actually thinks he knows JavaScript very well? OK, there is a couple misguided people. That's good. But most people actually not so confident, which is, I mean, maybe a good thing. So what I want to, you to st think, just stop for a moment, forget about React and Angular, and think about pure JavaScript. What is it should be like? What is the proper way? So JavaScript is very flexible, as we all know, and we can write it in many different ways. And I'm not here to teach you how to write JavaScript the right way. There is no right way. That's why there is a Zen of JavaScript. JavaScript is very Zen-based language. Sometimes I think the Brendan Eich is actually kind of Zen monk in disguise because it's crazy, right? So I like to say that JavaScript is a Bruce Lee of JavaScript language, of, of languages, programming languages. Because it's flexible, it's powerful, and it's changed the whole picture. I hope he wouldn't die young. And uh, I like this quote of Bruce Lee, and I want to sort of point you to some of the things in JavaScript which you maybe haven't seen before, and maybe didn't think about this in, from this direction. So there's a very, very popular concept of uh, Zen Buddhism is what is the sound of one hand clapping? The answer is like this is not the smartest answer, it's not correct one. Uh, there, there is lots of emptiness concept in the Zen. And there are lots of emptiness concepts hidden in JavaScript. And I want to show you some of them. Of course, obvious answer when you're coming to the, this question is what is the number which is not a number. So uh, let's assume you have a function, something like that, something simple like I've, you pass me a number and range, and if it's inside this range, I'll return you this number. If it's not, I'll return you, well, basically, people put, like, if I don't know what to return, I return now. Oops. And then you check, like, oh, if this is in rage, not equals to now, then do something, do something. But it will be much more JavaScript way, I would say, if this function will return you none. But people are afraid to use none. It's like i never seen anybody actually embrace none in their code. I assume it's because pe when people met none, it's the first time when you 
you know, that concatenate the strings and suddenly you have this none, 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 none on your screen and you're like, oh shit, this none again. <laughs> and then every time you see none, you're like, oh, I don't want to see this thing. It doesn't exist. You know, if, I, if I close my eyes, it will disappear. Uh, what if none exists? I'm sorry. It does exist and it's actually a cool feature, right? So what the cool about none is that, that you can have like mul multiple functions which work with numbers and they use each other together. And instead of returning now or something, then check if something, you could just return none, keep going, keep going, still a number, still a number. At the end, it will be none if anything was wrong. And you just don't need to worry about this stuff. It's kind of useful. I never, ever seen anybody actually typing none. <laughs> <laughs> like in their code, because, because I don't know, because why, why, why you didn't use none? You don't know. Nobody, nobody does. I think it's uh, this is one of the JavaScript way. The none exists there for a reason. So maybe, maybe you shouldn't be afraid of it. Maybe you should, you know, think how you can actually embrace it. It's there. It's like, you know, living in a four-bedroom apartment with two bedroom locked. And just, you know, you can do that. Why? Maybe you don't know there are doors. Maybe, I don't know. Let's talk about equality. It's a favorite topic for everybody, right? Favorite operator in JavaScript. Everybody loves it. It's crazy. Douglas Crockford li loves it most of all. Um, so what is this, this uh, double equals? Uh, so object double equals true? No. Object double equals false? No. Like, what the heck? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Like, no, well, it's, that's how things are. But if you have object which has value of, then suddenly it could be equals to false or to true. And it, so it's not always not equal to true and false. And empty array is equals to false, right? And obviously, none is not equals to none. And when you look at this, like, okay, this is crazy, this is madness, and this is not right, and I will never learn how it all works. So rather, I will use triple equals and be safe. And this is the right way. And I use triple equals all the time, no matter what, and I'll be happy. This is not the then way. This is not the JavaScript way. Why? Because what about these guys? Are you you're not going to use them as well? Because they behave pretty much the same. Let's look at this one uh, as a separate example. This is still true. This is still true. So using triple equal wouldn't really save you from the problems. It will just uh, delay the day when you will face it and you will say, like, holy crap, what is this? How it works? So some people could say, well, it's with less than, it's much easier because it kind of works with numbers. So it basically converts everything to number and then does a comparison. And then it all makes sense. Objects com converted to numbers are nan. So nan is not equal, not equal to true, not equal to false. And true and false become 0, 1. And everything else is kind of falling in space. So everything's good. I just will remember this is just works just like numbers. All good. Not really. So <laughs> if you have object and you put object less than or equal to object, it will be true because object equal to itself. So it's not really converted to number. What is my point? Well, maybe my point is learn the language. And instead of trying to avoid problems, try to go through, accept it, embrace it, take it, learn it. You're writing this language anyways. So avoiding the problems not works all the time. So you can avoid the with operator. You can. Avoiding double equal with triple equals, it's a false path of you know, later disappointment. Don't disappoint yourself and me. So talking about acceptance, it's uh, it's really great 
to s look at some of the native uh, functions which inside vanilla JS and look how they behave. And the API of uh, JavaScript is actually pretty great. And I actually surprised that when people writing their own APIs uh, for the libraries and stuff, for some reason they, instead of copying the JavaScript, they trying to copy, I don't know, some other languages, some other concepts, some other things. And the JavaScript is very pretty. My favorite function is char at. Don't ask me why. I just, I just like it. What I like about char at, it's very acceptable. It accepts anything. You can pass any shit inside. <laughs> it will give you the answer. <laughs> no matter what, it will just, yeah, whatever. I don't accept you to pass me the number. Pass me something. I'll, I'll deal with it. <laughs> so it doesn't matter if it's a string. Is it like float number? Is it array? Is it true? I will do this. Pass me nothing. I assume it's zero. Pass me nan. I assume it's zero. Important. It's so cool. Minus two. I will give you character minus two. No exceptions. No null returned. I return you the character, empty character. What did you expect? <laughs> it's the perfect answer to the. What is the character? This character. No, not like no character. What are you talking about? There is no character. What are you? This, this is a character, empty character. This is so awesome. I mean, seriously, this is the poetry of the language. This is the JavaScript as it, at its best. That's not the finish of the char ad. It's not only acceptable to the argument you're passing in, it's also acceptable to the this, to the context of it. We change the, put it on the number prototype, and you say nan char, char ad and give you n. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Boolean? Yep. How awesome is that? Seriously. <laughs> Guys, this is a JavaScript. Please welcome. <laughs> and when you write your code in JavaScript, it should look just like that. It should be just like that. Your function should be just like that. I can grab your function, use it the way I want. Like this, like that, whatever. And it should work. And it shouldn't really care. Because JavaScript is a careless language. It should, you should care less. Your users of your API should care less. You know, it's like a surfer kind of language. It doesn't really care. It just do its business. I, was, I start talking about emptiness in the beginning. The JavaScript is serious about emptiness. It has many ways to express the emptiness. Uh, how many other languages could give you so many ways to say this is empty? There is nothing there. It's nothing exists. Well, the three obvious candidates is nan, null, and undefined. So nan is kind of empty number, not zero. Empty number, not a number. Something like the concept of nan is kind of funny in, in itself. Like, Number, which is not a number, but still number. It's like, this is, this is so philosophical. You should sit and meditate on it, like in lotus pose, for a while. What is null? It's like, it's not object. It's empty, but it's not really empty, because it's null. The undefined is the next level of null. It's like, it's not even null. <laughs> it's not defined, but it, is, it has a value. Holy shit. <laughs> this is so awesome. Just stop. Stop rushing, writing your code, and working with Shadow Dome. Just stop. Look at the beauty in your hands. Look at this. Like, oh my god, this is so cool. You think this is all about emptiness? JavaScript have more to tell you about emptiness. 
let's say we have two arrays. One we create like array of two, and as we create like, well, using the brackets and undefined, undefined. And these arrays are equal, not equal like this, but let's say equal like that, okay? So they're the same, okay? So if we say we create variable A equals to the array created like array of two, variable B equals to two undefined, A of zero equals to B of zero, yes. A of one equals B of one, yes. A length equals B length, yes. So they are the same, right? No, of course not. <laughs> of course not. We call b.map alert. We have two alerts undefined. We have a.map alert, and there are no alerts. Nothing happens. What? What? One in A, false. One in B, true. So array B has two values which are equal to undefined. Undefined is a value. And array A has two slots for values. And they are empty. <laughs> yeah? Getting there? They, uh, this is a true emptiness. They're not even there. When you're asking for it, it will give you value, like undefined. But this value is not in the array. <sighs> the emptiness. How then and philosophical is this, damn it? This is, I just showed you emptiness, but it's saying nothing. And as always, there is nothing new. And uh, obviously, I'm I want to say a bit about the new operator. <laughs> I personally always feel that new operator is sort of added there as a way to please Java developers. So they feel like, oh, this is, this is just like Java. Nothing like Java. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and to confuse the shit out of everybody. <laughs> I personally like. I use new operator when I need to create some prototypal thing and want to create some internal, uh, I don't like to call them classes, but apparently they are. And, but I hate the APIs which, give you, which tell you you have to use new. Something like, uh, what was this? Uh, my favorite one was this, uh, damn, I forgot the name. <laughs> you know, when this, uh, the physics imitator, and you have to, create new rectangle where you pass new point x, y, comma, new point x, y. Like, what the hell is that? Why you create objects for everything and with new? It's like, it's a Java. It smells like Java. And I don't like the smell. I think the new, e like, your API shouldn't tell people to use new. Like, I, uh, I created the Raphael, and I have a mistake to call it from the capital letter because because it's old library. And I saw so many times people write new Raphael instead of Raphael. The thing is nothing happens. And I just tired of com correcting them like, okay, if you feel like this makes you feel more safe to write new in front of, write it. But you don't have to. In fact, in many places in JavaScript, you don't have to. Who remember seeing code like this? Who is old enough? <laughs> It was like a, the trademark of a loser. <laughs> you wrote new object on new array, and everybody like, oh, look at this. So lame. And, and then people like, yeah, this is a cool way. It's like, it was like a club, people who write like this and people who write like that. Nowadays, nobody writes the first way. Is anybody? Oh, nobody will accept anyways. So it's kind of just kind of telling you this. Yeah, if you're a Java developer, maybe writing new object is more convenient for you and more, more easy to grasp. But actually, there is a better way. And it's almost true for everything. It's a very common concept, common pattern in JavaScript uh, 
itself having some constructor, it's absolutely calling is as a function is absolutely equal to calling new some constructor. It's true for object, it's true for array, it's true for regex, it's true for function. So JavaScript kind of giving you a hint, you know, like maybe, yeah, maybe you shouldn't really, whatever. <coughs> there, are, there are exceptions. Uh, the date object, the date object always looks like an alien inside the JavaScript because it's copied from the Java as much as it possibly can, and why it's, that's why it's so ugly. But it's, it's very useful, so we have to use it. But it's so ugly, oh my god. They're uh, uh, constructors like number, boolean, and string because they are uh, wrappers for native primitive types. They <laughs> behave differently when you call them without new. They just convert something to the primitive. The new ES6 have uh, constructors like set map and weak map. I don't know who wrote this rule inside them, but he's definitely not a JavaScript Jedi. Because if you call set without new, it's not just behave differently, it's throw you bloody exception in your face. The hell? <laughs> JavaScript doesn't throw exceptions unless there is a very serious reason for that. I don't see serious reason of calling set without new. Amateurs. <coughs> of course, there are like there are functions, and functions are big deal. And I wanted to tell if you want to learn more about functions, you could watch the talk, but about functional programming. But unfortunately, it happens right now. So if you want to learn more about functions, you choose the wrong talk. Congratulations. There are five faces of the function. Uh, and this is sort of also very JavaScript way that the functions, anything could be anything. Anything could be used in many different ways. You could wrap it in different positions. Functions has different positions too. So if you create a function which reference some variables outside the function, you create a closure. And you all know this. And it's boring. I know. Sorry. But I have to tell it because maybe somebody doesn't. It's writing code like this to make it more obvious. It's you're, you're, you're already see like many, already three faces of function right here. So function creates uh, a scope. Functions create a cl closure. And you could return function because function is also an object. You, you know, I know, I know I'm kind of saying like Captain Obvious right now, but bear with me. You could also use function as a constructor to create new uh, objects. And you can use the function as a basically it's just subroutine, which you can call with arguments and to return you something. This is this is obvious thing. What I what I'm trying to point is that it's the function itself is having so many roles, and you can use it in so many ways. And this is a truly a JavaScript way of doing things. And it's not JavaScript only way of doing things. There are other languages which do the same thing, like Lisp, like. Luna, like whatever, but it's important to embrace it and not trying to avoid it and trying to say, okay, you know what, I will write the different way. I, I will just use this two bathroom, two bedroom instead of instead of one. And there is a uh, JavaScript paradox: that function constructor is a function, and function constructor is a function. So it's like it's very remind me of the Inception movie when they're going to these stairs and it's actually <laughs> coming back to whatever they started going. So what I'm trying to say, apart from show that I read this spec and found some interesting parts of JavaScript, what I'm trying to say is the JavaScript has its own way. And instead of trying to do it in this or that way, how about you step back, look, and I just scratched the surface here. I have, it's a very short talk. You could find more interesting features of JavaScript which you probably haven't seen before, and try to think what would JavaScript do. You know, when I was a kid, I and I haven't come into hard situation. I was thinking, what Bruce Lee will do, and then act like Bruce Lee. Sometimes it helps, sometimes not. But <coughs> <laughs> what will JavaScript do? When you write your code, don't think like, oh, what I want. 
what would JavaScript way would be to do this thing? What would be the JavaScript? What if this will end up inside the JavaScript language, just like uh, functions like parse int or char add or something like that, join? What will, how would I write this function? Do it this way and be a truly enlightened JavaScript developer. And don't just sit and think about it. Open console, read it, dig inside it, become the wizard. I don't know, maybe, you know, be, a, be a master Yoda of JavaScript. And thank you very much.